So today we want to prepare the typical Salento lace using the following ingredients. Three hundred grams of durum wheat semolina flour, and then an addition of tomato sauce. I'm using this one that has some vegetables inside, but it's fine with a normal sauce. Seventy to eighty grams of tomato pulp puree, and then bring it to a total of five hundred eighty grams using the scales. So we have to reproduce an eighty percent hydration of the semolina bearing in mind that the pulp contains almost entirely water. After adding the yeast too, a couple of grams of yeast will be fine dry yeast, three to four grams of fresh yeast, if on the contrary you have that. And after a first kneading, this is the result. But in the version that I intend to make, I will add some cherry tomatoes at the end because I want to have the peel around. And I will add shredded because the Apulian lake has a chili pepper, a chip cooked in the circus, finely shredded. Let's see what comes out of it. So the same, my first dough. The hydration for the semolina is perfect because it's not too sticky. Now we need to work it in a way that leads to the formation of the gluten network. Let's roll up our sleeves and work it a bit. But before moving on, I want to open the world's hottest potato chip to finally grind and put it inside. So I'll show you live what I find inside. Let's move the camera. We have stickers. Younger ones usually like this kind of thing. The stickers are a testament that they have eaten it, but I won't eat it directly. I will use it as an ingredient. This is the potato chip, well protected in its packaging. We then have a small pillow and the instructions. Basically, it asks if you can handle this chip and eat it and then gives some advice. Uh, it says that eating this chip will give you an unforgettable experience and you can be proud of it, etc. So, why did I choose to buy this chip? Because I have always been a fan of french fries and chili pepper. Anyway. You see, this is a glove provided, and I'm going to open it with a cutting board. I will do, or rather directly on top, I will cut the potato chip into a thousand pieces. And then I'll cook it with the rest of the dough. A super spicy potato chip. Let's hope I don't regret it. Let's see how it is. In the meantime, let's cut it. I'm going to get another glove. My age. Heat. Let's start with this, little crumbs. I'm not really interested in the challenge, but I love spicy food, so I'll try it and add it as an ingredient.
You know, Salento lace is the type of sandwich that's usually thin, so I've decided to include some sautéed onions I've already prepared, and some tomatoes, black olives if I have any. I don't have any at the moment though. We'll see if I go out and buy some during this video, or if I'll do without. It's almost lunchtime, so I'm going to have to break for lunch. Here we go. I wonder what's going to happen to him with this crumb. Who knows what effect it will have on him. I absolutely have to try a crumb because I don't want to ruin the dough without seeing what it's like first. Small crumb. Let's see. This one. You can really taste it. It's got a bitter aftertaste. It's quite strong and spicy. It would have been impossible to eat it all, even for me, who buys the devil's pizza every single day, every single weekend. It's super stuffed. This is really pushing it, so I would say that for this dough that I have right here, a small amount like this should be enough. Let's start working on it right away to incorporate its contents. A small quantity. More than enough. Trust me, it's very strong. That's enough. When you let the dough rest, it also becomes easier to work with as if it had already absorbed its purpose, fulfilled its task. This dough was sticky a little while ago, but now, after 10 minutes, it has compacted and become a dough that can be worked with to the maximum. So, let's take advantage and ask for gloves. We roll it out properly. We make the same fold several times because we want to strengthen the gluten mesh. And let's also add some cherry tomatoes and onion, which will give volume, mass, and even water. So it'll come back a little less workable at some point, but that's okay too. Let's go and get the tomatoes and the leeks. Here they are, our leeks. Stu, remove the excess water because we don't need it. Then we're going to wring them out. I put a little bit in, maybe I've done more, but it's not a problem because I'm going to make something else for lunch. So a little bit of leek because I chop up the onions, even the white one. I had the red ones, but I know that you also use the white one too, it's perfect. Not too much because then it all stays in the same place, but it must be put in. Here it is, the first round. Now we look at them again. Piembrato, like that. More onion. Let's give it some contempt. I seasoned these onions only with salt, plenty of it, because I didn't put them in the dough and extra virgin olive oil. So you can do the same too. The yeast has already been added to the flour, so it needs humidity. 
but certainly not that much salt. We've added the chili pepper and the onion. Now I'm going to grab some cherry tomatoes. The cherry tomatoes I was saving to make a focaccia, but I think I'll have leftovers. I'll put just a couple of them. Like this. Let's open them up properly to give this product the appearance of rusticity. You can see that it's starting to increase in volume and it also feels a little softer. We have to work carefully because the dough tends to break now because of the ingredients we've added. Let's put in another little bit of chili pepper brisolina, just because in the end, I have to eat them myself. So I know I'm going to love it. I have to say it's pretty strong, huh? Kudos to whoever invented it. It was a great invention. But guys, don't eat it all at once, it's tough. I can confirm this, being a fan of indulgence. Let's wait for a bit. Let's see that the dough settles on its own. All right, let's take a moment to close it like so. And we put it aside and take that dough, which still needs a bit of work. I prefer having to shape them by hand to break them from the start rather than do it later because the dough becomes difficult. This one broke a bit because uh, it doesn't have the gluten structure yet. Let's add the chili right away and then work it. Here we go, guys. Let's grab a bit of everything what I had for the chip and we work on it ideally you should do these folds about 10 or 15 times then spacing them with rest phases always in the same direction so now this bottom would be the right direction because we've always folded on that side so either you turn it over, you see, and then you do that. This is an obvious choice based on the degree of hydration of the dough. Because the degree of hydration determines the manageability of the dough itself. The wetter it is, the more the processing technique requires intuition to use your hands at least. So you do it this way, you do it like this there rather than turning it upside down. But in the end, the goal is to create different layers. You seek to make the indica handle overlap with layers, and then you create the indica handle. And at the same time, we also disperse all the ingredients. Here we go again. Thank you. Here, karma is needed. No problem. If you have Calva, you get a good product. And you will also have fun with friends because Salento lace is truly a delicacy. Guaranteed. And they also make it sweet without the spicy pepper. They made that variant too. But I've known him since I was a child with chilies, and I must say there's no comparison. Here he is. He already feels more sad, so we should be there. I tried to move it closer to the camera so you can see it well. I did a nice magnification. We're at 2x, so here it is.
Let's let it rest for a moment. I've already put everything in. Only the tomatoes are missing. And the onion. Here we are, a little onion that's never enough. When I was a boy, I didn't like onion as much as I didn't like garlic. Then I became a lover of garlic in particular. Its properties, the innumerable properties that garlic has, never stop praising its benefits. And then the flavor too, which won me over. But I had to wait until I was 27 or 28 years old to appreciate it because my palate used to say no. Here we are, starting to get a little tighter. We let him rest. Let's see this too now, how it goes, which seems to be more compact. So this is how we'll work. We'll make five, six, seven, the ones we can and want to do, and then we let them mature. We'll meet again at the end of this process. Okay. A little side note on making a different kind of bread. By using this black bread flour that's quite widely available in Italy in supermarkets, you can make a splendid garlic and suppress a veneta bread. I measured out 224 grams of suppressa, five or six cloves of garlic, and the preparation is the same as for rye bread, which makes you So I'm going to skip the whole kneading phase to show you an alternative final result to the Salento lace.